All right, this video is long overdue. I wanted to teach Barracuda a long time ago to everybody, but uh, I really wanted to cultivate all the details. And so after playing, you know, in a heart tribute band for over seven years now, and also getting a lesson from Roger Fisher himself on how to play some of these details, I figure it's a good time to actually teach it. So we're gonna do the entire song today. And if you're the only guitar player in a band that plays this, you're gonna be okay because this takes up a lot of space. I do a lot of the Roger Fisher parts, but I also make it so that you can also back off a little bit if you have a second guitar player and you can you know, do the back and forth like the real song has. Roger talked about not using too much distortion because that's a mistake a lot of people make, but I'm using quite a bit today just because I'm not gonna be able to crank my amp super loud, so I still want the sustain. So I'm using more gain than he used on the recording. Add a flanger or a phaser effect to this to get it a lot closer. It's weird because I read it was actually a flanger, but it sounds more like a phaser, so I'm really confused. But uh, either way, one of those effects sound good on this. Let's go ahead and make the open E power chord. And one mistake people make is they overmute this and they make it really tight. I used to do that all the time. It's better if you move your palm back so it's a loose palm mute. So that's the riff we all know and love, right? Just don't choke it by overly palm muting it. That's my best advice. Now you could get crazy with the details, but I'm just gonna give you an overall uh, opinion on what to do right here. This is what Roger does for a lot of it. He just kind of goes for it, you know? So we're gonna do the 12th fret harmonics to the fifth fret harmonics, natural harmonics. So we get this. What I aim for are the middle strings to the higher strings. Usually if you do that, you're gonna be just fine. Then back to the power chords. I play with the muting a little bit. I lift off right before I do the F sharp. Did you notice that? It's just a habit I've been doing. Sounds good though. The next thing we're gonna do is pretty insane. We're gonna do a G power chord. We're gonna cover the third fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, and then we're gonna do the rest as open strings. Sounds like that. And Roger does a detail where he actually does a pinch harmonic and he just scrapes across all the strings. I can't pull it off every time, but if you wanna try it, it's a lot of fun. Sounds wild if you could pull it off. All right, back to the power chords. This time I hit the 12th fret and I just kind of hang there. Little whammy bar, you know, if you want. And then. And I just do this again. Oh, I actually did it. Sometimes those accidents happen. I love it. We have the mysterious verse part now because there's going to be a weird counting that you have to do. And there's a lot of ways to kind of figure it out over time. But uh, we'll just count it together today. Let's go. See, you have to stay on the open E power chord for a long time. So if you counted it, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one. So there's that extra count in there. So make sure you do that. Here's something that's more of a live thing. If you listen to the recording, it's not really in there. We're going to hit the C and then we're going to move our index finger back to the B note while holding on to this G with our pinky. <laughs> Love that sound. Roger does this live where he does the slide up every time during the verse. But what I like to do and what's on the recording is when you walk down, that's a sweet thing to do in the beginning. So the first time you do the verse, that's the first walk down I like to do. The second time it comes around, I do the slide like Roger does. So it's a good balance of the two worlds. So the entire verse would be Second time. That's how I'd recommend to do it because it keeps it interesting. It's something different each time. Now for some crazy details that blew my mind. So we're gonna go. I never knew that's what they did. So it's that same C power chord from before. We walk down once again to that B note. 
instead of going to an A power chord like I thought, Roger takes his ring finger and puts it on the sixth string fifth fret, which is A. Creates an interesting seventh chord sound. I love doing it that way because you get that little slide as you go down to the E power chord. Now for the other part that'll blow your mind, this. Isn't that heavy? Live, I used to go. Do a harmony with the other guitar player. But when, once Roger showed me this, I do it every time now. And it's a D power chord to an A power chord. Feel free to do that. If you want to do more open versions of that, that's cool too. Both sound really good. We go back to the intro riff. There's a cool guitar fill lead right here. It's natural harmonics. So we're going to go from the first string 12th fret to the third string 7th fret. We keep cascading down like that, skipping the strings. You could hear another guitar in the background do another harmonic hit to a dive bomb type thing, but I usually let that last harmonic just sort of sing as I dip down. All right, then the second verse is the same as the first, except there's gonna be that little trill fill right there, so it's gonna be. That's just the open D and you trill on the second fret E. Just make it real quick, real tight. It seems like such a small thing, but it really differentiates between the first and second verses. So I love those kind of fills that they throw in. Okay, after the second verse, we do the same. All that kind of stuff. And then we come to another part. And I love the way this feels. I have a little bit of a hack for you. That slide can be a little bit difficult because you have to jump to the other strings. It doesn't seem difficult, but live it can be a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to slide up using this double power chord, G, D, G. Then I just keep my first finger barred while I jump my pinky and ring finger over for those two notes. If you mute correctly, you don't have to hit the low sixth string on the higher string slide up. So you can go. The whole time your first finger stays on the fat strings, which is really nice. Sure, you could go and jump, but that could be a little bit weird live. Makes it a tiny bit more choppy, even though uh, Roger can do it perfectly. I just find that jumping across makes it kind of choppy, at least when I do it. So I like to do that to make it smoother. This part is a point of confusion for a lot of people and I screwed it up for a long time, but follow this. You make a C power chord. Make it as choppy as possible. So major staccato going on here. Then we slide up from the fifth fret to the seventh fret, fifth string. Kind of like Hendrix type thing. Then we just walk up fifth fret, seventh fret, skip up again, except this time we go fifth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. The next part we do it in A, so it's kind of the same idea at first. It doesn't even sound right, does it? But when you put it in the context of the song, it is right. So we have the A, hammer on. See how it's the same structure as what we did in C, except now we're back here in A, we just end differently now. So second string, third fret to second uh, fret. So we have, if you wanna put a little squeal in there, sounds kinda cool live doing that. Then you do it again. Now 
how it changes. Now we just have to go to the second fret, third fret, fifth fret. It's a weird time signature, so really pay attention. Be sure to unmute when you hit those power chords. Now we go to the solo part. Really watch what these bends do, because the bends are the most important part of this. Okay, so it's really just a you know bluesy sounding bend in the beginning. So we have second string, fifteenth fret. I like to do that at the peak of the bend, pick it again, and let it unbend. That next bend was just the 14th fret to the 12th fret on the first string. Now here's another Roger Fisher tip. We have 14th, 15th, 17th staccato picking. Really, you just go to the next string and do the same thing, but rake your way back to it. So it's like. All I'm really doing is I'm muting the first string and getting that little scrapey mute right there before I pick the next 14th fret. The next string, we go 14, 15, 16, but we do the double scrape now. Gives it some traction. Once again, something I never did. I never even knew it existed until Roger told me. All right, I love that little. Really exaggerate that slide. And then you're gonna come back up with a. It's like you're just picking on the low E string while you're coming up just to fill some space in a cool way. This bend is deceiving. It's the second string, 14th fret. You bend it up. I always thought it was the 15th fret. 14th fret up, come down, and then skip a string and go to the 14th fret on the D string. That can be tough to do in the heat of battle, to be going up like that and then having to hit the bend perfectly it can be very challenging. So work on that. We slide up to the second string, 17th fret. Then we go 14th fret, 15th fret of the first string. Back to the 14th fret. That's just second string, 17, 15, and then on the third string, 16. Really nail this because it sticks out. If you mess this part up, it gets really kind of weird sounding. See how that time, the second time around, I went up to the 17th fret at the end of that. Now here's something I hear done wrong quite a bit. For that, I go to the first string, 17th fret, bend it up a half step, pre-bend it basically, and go to the 15th fret. Then do the bend again, but this time a whole step. We're gonna be doing this crazy lick that's different every time I hear them do it live, but I used to do it with tapping. I'll show you that option too. But get used to going. It's okay if it's a little bit messy, you know, if there's a little bit of crosstalk between the two strings, it's okay. Just go crazy like that. And then once again, we have these double stops, 14th fret on the second and third strings to the, to the 12th frets on the same strings. But I do a... So after the big barrage of... So live, what I used to do before is I would tap the 20th fret and just go. It's a cool little option if you want. It's a little more Eddie Van Halen. You know, it's a good thing to mix in there if you want to. But if you watch Roger, he rocks this backwards. Notice too, I'm doing two upstrokes. Seems to add to the attack of that part. All right, we're back to this part. Now, after all that, we have to do this really important dive bomb. It's the seventh fret this time. So we finally get to go to the middle here. Sounds really killer. It's really easy to overdo it, obviously. If you listen to the actual recording, it's actually pretty subdued, which is strange. It just sort of fades out. But live, you could just go crazy and be like. We're back to that. You ride the power chord for a while. 
Now comes the whole exit series of this song. We're going to go from the third string 12th fret to the second string 15th fret. Then I just hit the 12th fret harmonics. Then I make this interesting shape. I do the same thing I just did, but I add the 14th fret on the first string. Then this part. That doesn't have to be perfect every time because I don't think I even do it the exact way the album does, but it's 14th fret. Then I go to the second string 12th fret and then I skip a string and I do the fourth string 14th fret and I slide down. Then I hit the low E. I love how that feels playing that part live. Now, this is a really confusing part, but I found a really great way to do it. We go to the fourth string seventh fret harmonic. Take your pinky and ring finger and put it on the second and third strings of the seventh fret. And we're gonna hit the highest three strings. Is that a great sound? So we get like a. Some more harmonic jumps, fifth string, seventh fret, third string, 12th fret, back to where you just hit. Back to the fourth string, seventh fret. Now we stack some natural harmonics. We go to the third string, seventh fret, to the fourth string, seventh fret. Then the first string to the second string, 12th frets. This part's cool with another guitar player. You can go back and forth, but if you're the only guitar player, you could still do it. Let's go back to this 12th fr uh, fret to 15th fret idea. Walk the 15th fret back to the 14th fret. Walk to the 13th fret now and add your pinky to the first string 15th fret. And then end with just the natural harmonics of the 12th fret. Once again. You just go off on that part. The other guitar player can just do the opposite with you. Like, back and forth. And so on. Okay, we're at the very end already. The end has some confusing things going on. There's another guitar doing the opposite beat on the hits, which is really interesting to know. But really just go like this if you're the sole guitar player. This is the fourth time. It's five. At five, they always do these odd numbers, which is really cool. Since there are three guitar players in my band doing this song for the Heart Tribute Band, I like to go up an octave and go. I don't know why, but I really love the sound of these chords played on the second, third, and fourth strings. Yes, you could easily go, but it's a little more thick sounding. I like to thin it out. Plus, Nancy Wilson's known for doing these kind of chords a lot, like E with a pinky here, so I just naturally go there. There is, like I said, another guitar going like this. Listen to the recording. It's really weird. It like goes back and forth. They kind of play off of each other. It's really sweet. But if you want to just do the main core guitar part, go ahead and just do those thick power chords. best feeling is at the, the end if you all hit tight the crowd just goes crazy usually okay a lot of weird little details but work those into the song and i guarantee you're gonna have a brand new appreciation for these riffs i mean i already grew up loving this song but as soon as roger showed me on that zoom lesson that we did i totally saw this song in a whole new light and when i played it with the band everything felt so much cooler so have fun with Barracuda, and also congratulations to Hart. I saw that they're back together now. They're played, I think they played just a couple shows recently. They were on some TV shows and stuff, some uh, podcasts. It's really cool to see them back together, and they played Barracuda, and they played Magic Man on the show that I saw. So we'll have to do Magic Man in the future, but that one's so in-depth, it's probably going to take multiple lessons. All right, enjoy Barracuda, and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.